Hi, I'm going to start presenting um, the final project of Group 3, Rajvant Mishra, MD Jalal Udin, and Sarah Wagadsky. Um, we looked at a data set of books about U.S. politics published around the 2004 presidential election and sold by Amazon um, in order to analyze the relationship between book buyers and the political views expressed in the books. We used social network analysis to identify relationships between books bought by the same buyers. Um, we use sentiment analysis to determine if there is a relationship between the political views expressed in the books um, and whether the summary of the book is positive or negative. Um, and we built machine learning models to predict whether the um, to predict whether the book was liberal, conservative, or neutral. Um, the data set is a GML file. The nodes represent books about U.S. politics um, that were sold by Amazon. The edges represent um, the co-purchasing of books by the same buyers. Um, and the, each of the nodes are label, labeled liberal, neutral, or conservative. Um, we started by importing the libraries, um, and then we looked at the social network graph. And you can see that there are sort of two distinct clusters of books that were bought by the same buyers. And we wanted to analyze this further according to the political leanings shown in the books and so you can see that those two clusters represent liberal books and conservative books um, more 47 percent of the books are conservative 41 percent are liberal and 12 percent are neutral and you can see that this is saying that books that were liberal tended to be bought by the same buyers books that are conservative tend to be bought by the same buyers and um, neutral books sort of link the two together and there are much fewer of them um, we looked at the degree centrality of the books, and you can see that the books with the 10 highest degree centralities um, are equally conservative and liberal. There are no neutral books among the um, 10 top degree centrality books. The ones at the very top are conservative. Um, so a buyer who bought one of these books is um, um, likely to have bought another one of the books within the data set. And here you can see um, the social network graph of those books, of, the, of, of those with the highest degree centralities. Again, orange being the liberal books and blue being the conservative books. Um, amongst the books with the lowest degree centrality, you can see actually that four of them are neutral. So there's um, a really high chance that political books that are neutral leaning um, were not bought by um, uh, uh, by other buyers, whereas um, the ones with the higher degree centralities are um, those with that are either liberal or conservative. Um, we looked at the eigenvector centrality, which takes into account the number of connections the book has and whether the books are also connected to a lot of books. So um, a book with a high eigenvector centrality um, measures how many books uh, buyers also bought, as well as the significance of those other books that the buyers bought. Um, you can see here that, again, there are no neutral books with high eigenvector centralities, and most of the books with the high eigenvector centralities are actually the liberal books. And here you can see a graph of those books. You can see most of these are um, liberal books. Um, you can see American Dynasty, Big Lies, Bushwhacked, um, the Great Unraveling, Worse Than Watergate, The Price of Loyalty, The Lies of George W. Bush, and then the conservative books with the highest eigenvector centrality, Off With Their Heads, Losing Bin Laden, um, and Party, no, a National Party No More. Um, among the books with the lowest eigenvector centrality, you can see that there are also um, neutral books that appear here. Um, the next thing that we did um, is we did looked at the text analysis of the book summaries. So um, we collected the book summaries from Amazon, um, and then in order to analyze them, we removed punctuation and the HTML tags. You can see that here. Um, we broke the sentences up into individual words, which is called tokenization. Um, we removed stop words. Um, we stemmed the text so that um, endings on the text were, wouldn't be present, um, and then we lemmatized, um, which is basically um, removing inflection, inflectional endings and um, returning the, to the dictionary form of the word. Thanks, Sarah. So as Sarah said that we have uh, performed all the text related uh, activity, like stemming off the text, tokenizing, lemmatizing, and removing the punctuation stop word. So finally, we have uh, built a final data set where we actually uh, performed all these steps on one one particular uh, 
uh, and store the result in one particular column. So this is uh, the one, one thing that differently done in this case is we are doing both stemming and limitizing by passing uh, to our function both hash true. So as you can see here, if I pass 1000 years for revenge, uh, you can see I'm also returning years, I'm also returning revenge, and I'm also returning revenge. So this like this is the uh, limitized form, and this is the stemmed form of the revenge here. So we applied the same uh, this function to our full data set on the summary data set, which is actually a raw text. And you can clearly see here this is the title this is just for reference we have every, all the book title uh, book summary listed here and these are the tokens finally that we get okay so now at this point i'm gonna work with the count vectorizer which actually helps us count how many times particular word or particular uh, n grams that is single words or multiple words are repeated in a particular sentence or a particular corpus given to this particular uh, given to the count vectorizer so we have uh, we are using the stop word as english and i'm using ngram as one and two what i'm trying to achieve here is i want to group the words uh, even if it's single word and also the double word so like uh, we'll see with an example so we are finally performing the operation, transforming the data set by passing our final summary final information, which we got from the above steps here. And everything is now, now I'm just displaying up the data. You can clearly see these are my books and these are the different terms in the book. And you can see like zero main, zero main. This is a single word, uh, like 90, 50 transform and I have 90, 50. So I have, this is, this is one and the two. So this is the meaning of 1950s and 1950s. So this is coming because of the limitization and the streaming uh, both. Uh, similarly, uh, this whole row is about all the books that we have in our data set. And then we have in the column, we have all the different terms where they're with their n grams and how many times they came up. You can see with these latest, it talks about how many times the term is getting repeated in the book summary. Okay, now we thought of presenting how many rows are actually present and how many columns and like what are the total unique words do we have? So we can very clearly see that we have like, so we can see here we have 105 rows, that is 105 books, and we have 20,860 uh, terms, n-grams and the bigrams in the in the our in our corpus. Now I'm gonna use this information and perform our analysis on this. So we have also used pickle in this case. Pickle is nothing but uh, in terms of uh, Python data library, it is actually one which helps us to store your data into your file system or in the model into your file system and then you can use it and retrieve it and then perform your data analysis on that. It just helps you save time in order to rebuild uh, the data set that you are actually working on. So you don't have to rebuild. I can anytime come and start from this point. I don't have to execute the above steps in order to start from this point. <clears throat> I'm saving my data set to the uh, pickle uh, and uh, this is my model. It's going to save it to the local directory. And I'm also saving my book summary information and I'm sub saving everything. And then I can just show you the two top two books, how it's stored. And you can see the summary is what we are going to use it. And this is the other information, the other step-by-step -step, uh, operation that we performed on the book. We will do the explanatory data analysis where I'm going to take my term matrix and convert it into a document term matrix where I'm going to see the terms in the row and the columns will contain the books. So I will have 105 columns and I will have 20,000 plus rows. Here I'm just displaying the first six record. Then this is coming because I just did the transform. So we can be read our data set by using the pickle and then I'm doing the transpose on it so that I can present it. We will also try to display that the top 10 words from all the books. So we have like 100 plus books summary and we will try to find the top 10 words from all the books and we will also try to find the top five words from the each book. So we actually calculated the relative frequency of each book, uh, sorry, each terms in the book. 
and this these were the uh, terms that we found having the highest uh, related frequency in the book so top five words from each book so for example if i see the 100 years for revenge and i'm just sorting the data so that i can get the value and we see that there are like fbi year investigation investigative and these are the words that is being uh, most commonly coming up in the summary of this book so i can i can guess by looking at this information this is actually uh, something with the fbi and it needs something to do with the investigation but fbi is involved and there is so much of mention of the year it means there is uh, it's uh, it's talking about different years and how FBI has investigated something. Uh, that's what maybe this book will be all about. So this this information is like uh, coming just based upon the summary of the book. Okay. So I um, then finding out the top ten words from each book summary. So we just wrote a function where I can uh, print this information. We have so we are displaying the top five words here and you can see like for these books we have already seen these are the words similarly for charlie's wilson war we have these words so similarly like we have uh, we just uh, wanted to show how we can actually list the top five words from all the book just to save some space we did not print it for all the books now we are going to find the frequency of the word across the book summary so we want to know how many times uh, the word is actually used across each book summary. So for that, we will take the first top 10 words from, from the, the books that we have already um, found in the above steps. And then I'm going to aggregate that and count it and see how many times that word is coming up. So it's just using the top 10 words from the book and then using it to understand how many times those words are repeated across each book. So we created a dictionary and you can very clearly see here the term America is coming from 17 books. Some uh, term Bush is coming from 14 books. So you can see that these mostly all the books are actually talking about America, president and Americans and the politics. We will, we will build the world cloud where we will plot the term for each book. And depending upon their uh, how often they have they, they were presented in the book summary, you can see here. So this is like the whole summary of the book. So whatever result that you see here is actually plotted in this uh, form. You can see we can very clearly uh, these are the words that we saw above where president and Americans and the Bush. We did not see war because maybe it was sixth or seventh. But these are the words that we saw, and these are the different terms and how often they are getting repeated across all book. Then plotting the word cloud for each book was interesting to see how each book uh, has used its term and how they actually, um, how the word cloud can actually give insight about the book without even reading it. So you can see here like 100 years for revenge and it's talking about revenge, investigation, year and FBI. Bush versus Weltway, where uh, you can see uh, book is talking about, it's, it's talking about some uh, something about Iraq, something about different states, something about Saddam. And then um, Charlie's War, where you have some secrets, congressman involvement and uh, Wilson's. Obviously, Charlie Wilson is... So there is some war between these and there is an Afghan involvement. So and even the Russia and Washington. The point that we want to make here is by looking at these common terms across these books, most uh, summary of the books, we are able to identify what type of book it is. Moving on, we have also displayed the top uh, 200 terms here from all the books. And you can very clearly see that we have these uh, words and the Bush and America is obviously standing in the top that we have seen above. Okay, I want to move ahead with this and I want to talk about the vocabulary where we actually wanted to see how often that word is being actually used uh, in the, uh, like, what is the frequency, how many times and uh, that word is actually coming up in the book, uh, book summary. So we actually um, plotted, uh, took the data of Bush and America and American and I grouped the Bush as leader and America and American as part of nation. 
and I created the column. So 100 years in the summary, it's only saying it once, whereas sleeping with devils is talking about these words four times. So that's just how the data is actually represented. Point, uh, we just thought of plotting this and plotting this information and see how many times each book is repeating uh, this term in the summary at least. Conservative is for red color and blue is for liberal. So you can see mostly uh, there are liberal books that talking about Bush more, more often and then talking about the America, whereas there is a conservative book which talks both about Bush and uh, America. And then there is this set of books which hardly talks about Bush, but it does talk about America a lot. And then there is this uh, subset of very small uh, network of books which is actually talking uh, about Bush and America at, at the lower frequency. So if we see the same plot with the name, you can see the French betrayal of America where the Americans, so because it looks like more of a national issue where that's where the America is actually coming up more often in this world. And uh, maybe something happened in the Bush era, maybe or before or after, or maybe during his other uh, work that could have been mentioned here. And that's why he's being named in the book. Uh, whereas the against all enemies and then Bush caps. So there are like these books that actually uh, books that actually talk about Bush and they have Bush in the title also. So it's it's very uh, self-explanatory self that how the books are actually uh, titled and how their uh, content, the summary content actually uh, tells more about the book in this case. Finally, as part of this project, we thought of taking uh, performing the sentiment analysis, uh, which involves understanding the polarity in the subjectivity. So we actually perform this uh, analysis on multiple ways. Like we first took the full data set and perform our analysis and see what is the subjectivity and the polarity we are getting. And we also splitted our data, like each sentence in the summary, and then see what is the how the sentiment flows from each sentence to other sentence. Uh, I will try to show up those graphs. The, here is some example where the sentiment and the, the uh, polarity and the subjectivity I'm trying to explain. The polarity is more of an opinion. If I have, um, if as I'm, I'm trying to say here is, uh, if my polarity is positive, it's, I'm sorry if I said opinion, it's the feelings, it's a positive feeling and the negative feeling, which can range from plus one to the minus one. But uh, if I am somewhere in between, I'm like being neutral or if I'm less more than zero, I'm leaning towards positiveness of the feeling. And if I'm less than zero, I'm leaning towards a negativeness. So it ranges between minus one and positive one. Whereas the subjectivity is talks about the topic, it's, it's the subject that, that is being um, that is being targeted or centered here in this case. So if, if my content or context is more subjective, uh, how fact in the in the topic I am talking about the more close to zero it will be and if it is more of an opinion that I am trying to convey from the sentence or from the word then it will be more towards one so subjectivity is measured the more close to zero it is the more factual information it is the more close to one it is it is treated as um, it's it's an opinion that somebody is trying to make so by using this information and how this is being calculated is is there is no rule actually so it's it's each words in the english dictionary has been classified and given certain scores and text blob as the package which actually takes all these terms and then takes all these scores and then it averages out and then it gives us the uh, uh, actual weightage to that word and then for the sentence if we have to calculate we just take the average and see how the uh, how the teacher is performing um, for the overall sentence in this case. <laughs> so as you can see sim uh, simply uh, here I'm taking the first statement of the uh, summary and the last statement of the summary and I'm passing it to the text blob and getting the sentiment and you can see here the start sentiment is with the polarity of 0, 006 and subjectivity is 007. So this is more of an opinion here. And this is uh, this is more than zero. So it's, it's, it's not on the negative side, it is on the positive side. 
it has uh, obviously more than neutral feeling it's, it's more more towards positiveness but it is not exactly positive it's, it's a neutral feeling i can say with 0 0.07 whereas the end line sentiment is 0 0.25 it stayed in positiveness and the uh, subjectivity actually reduced so it actually went more on the facts uh, compared to where it began from so that's just the high level uh, view that I can guess. So if I have to actually see what I'm trying to say here, let's see, read the first statement. As the dust settled over Baghdad, a leading expert on Iraq tells the story of the obstacles uh, that stood between the US and fall of Saddam and revealed that many of them came from within the US government itself. So this is more of an uh, subjective story. Um, like it's, it's talking about it's this very neutral statement it's not giving any senti any sentiment in this case it's it's, um, it's it has few words that uh, leads us to whether it's in makes it as an opinion that's why you have such sub subjectivity of the complete sentence is little higher but the polarity gives us a uh, kind of an there is hardly any feeling in this it's just uh, it's it's uh, it's talking about how something happened and how the government actually worked on it. Okay, moving ahead, some other examples where we have the great and no great. So this is interesting to see how, how sentiment analysis or this package is actually displaying the data for us. So if I'm passing great and no great, and the output is the polarity when I said great, my polarity was 0 0.8 and the subjectivity was 0 0.75. But when I say no great, I'm my my I'm I'm pretty much minus 0 0.4, which is like I'm I'm negative. So it's not like no is taken as a negation, and then the subjectivity remains the same. Okay. Similarly, the other word. So moving on, what I have done, I have performed all this uh, operation on each data set, uh, full summary, and then we stored this information here so that we can see how how each book's polarity actually goes ups and down. There are some books where polarity is very very negative, and this is more about not opinion. It is more about the facts. There are some books with the neutral and close to facts books uh, with the uh, subjectivity. Uh, we'll we'll see how how this actually varies across the books. Now I have tried plotting this information here, where again um, we are referring to the neutrals as gray color here and the liberal as blue and the conservative as red color. So you can see how the polarity, anybody before this between uh, more than zero is actually talking about the positive and this side of the graph is mostly having a negative sentiments, whereas the graph or the dots going upward is actually more of an opinion, whereas the in terms of subjectivity and whereas the points going downwards is more of a fact. Uh, what we have noted is like um, each books, I don't know why, but the uh, they're, they're making like a, some, some, some sort of pattern here where uh, there can be a regression that can be drawn like what type of book is actually being sold so there is some sort of mixture of uh, opinion and the and the uh, positiveness that is actually being sold so like this book has very negative uh, feeling and it is more on the fact whereas this book has very positive feeling and it's is very opinionated so but these are the best sellers and there are this chunk of books which are uh, on opinion and in between with the subjectivity so they they are making uh sales. so these are the books and this is coming again coming from the summary of the book we cannot tell uh exactly but uh what it looks like there is a combination or there is a relation how the polarity and the subjectivity of the book is actually put together in order to make it to the bestseller. Now we will plot the subjectivity uh, and the polarity of the first nine book by going through each and every statement in the summary. So what I have I'm trying to show here is this book starts with the uh, kind of uh, so on on this side the dotted line the dotted green lines are talking about the subjectivity 
and um, because subjectivity can be measured between 0 and 1 whereas the polarity is measured between minus 1 and 1. So here the polarity uh, starts from negative polarity and then it, it moves to the positive and then again it sticks back to the neutralness and it, uh, it goes to the positive in between and then it goes back to the negative. So here uh, this is very interesting to see and maybe it's uh, between Bush versus Welby where something is really negative here. Uh, that's why you see the polarity is uh, going really down but this indicates this statement is and maybe in its opinion that's why it has a negative feeling so this was interesting to see how uh, polarity and the subjectivity they go and that uh, give us a sense about the statement and about about the topic how truthful the topic could be and how they they might be related to it and here they goes hand in hand similarly we see the same similar pattern if this this is like this indicates there is a big difference between what is actually presented versus what looks to be a truthful like is it really a truth that this person is trying to say or it's an opinion that is being imposed so what we have noted that mostly each book uh, have the starting point as a positive polarity and then they uh, jump around um, positive and the negativeness and Let's see how the sentiment is distributed among all the types of book. That is, we have three different types of book. I just wanted to see how this uh, different books are actually grouped together. So we grouped all the sentiments, the, all the summary, and then grouped this data by uh, book. And you can see it here. And then we, we thought of plotting a similar graph. And you can see here, this is the graph by polarity, and this is the graph by subjectivity. Polarity ranges between minus 1 to 0, and the subjectivity ranges between 0 and 1. You can see here uh, mostly all the books, new, neutral, conservative, and the liberal, they all had the same level of positivity across uh, each book. So we can say that in in, in a, uh, this is this is actually a grouped uh, grouped uh, I can say analysis on the summary of all the neutral books and similarly this is grouped analysis of all the conservative books and this is similarly so if anybody is reading all the neutral books he he is actually getting a not a negative feeling he's actually getting a kind of a neutral feeling so he is uh, adding some some positivity to that but not not exactly a negative feeling there and mostly all the books in group they stand close to the same level Whereas the uh, about the subjectivity, maybe one book is uh, up and down, but all the books in total, they, they actually stand pretty close to the neutral again. This was very interesting to see how books uh, in group are managing to maintain that uh, polarity and the subjectivity to the level of neutrality where um, and, and they're able to sell it. So it's interesting how both both the points are actually coinciding with each other and I was not expecting this to come like this I was expecting a pretty distributed uh, plot here but this was very interesting to see how you have mostly everything is falling on the same line or just very little difference that you can see like liberal is going little uh, with the facts whereas conservative is more on facts whereas the neutral is exactly on it like more of a neutral thing so social network analysis whatever we have done so far we, we are understood that there are political books bought by the same buyer in 2004 points towards two distinct clusters according to the political leaning of the book buyer who bought the conservative books largely bought other conservative books and buyer who bought the liberal books largely bought other liberal books and that's actually variable coincides with what we actually found in our sentiment analysis also. So from the sentiment analysis, we have seen that mostly each uh, book have used some of the words and there are like, there are some words like boost, which is being used across multiple books, Americans and America has been used across multiple books. And mostly all the books having a very neutral, um, overall neutral uh, sentiments. Uh, or close to neutral sentiment whereas the subjectivity is also pretty much close to neutral so the
So social network analysis, whatever we have done so far, we, we understood that there are political books bought by the same buyer in 2004 points towards two distinct clusters according to the political leaning of the book. Buyer who bought the conservative books largely bought other conservative books and buyer who bought the liberal books largely bought other liberal books. And that's actually very well coincides with what we actually found in our sentiment analysis also. Uh, from the sentiment analysis that we noted that the top words across the book shows very clearly that there were more book topics on, there are, on other books. There are more topics with being discussed in more than one book and more frequency of term bush was across many books and each books have used some of the most common words across and mostly all the best sellers and having a neutral subjectivity and the overall label and the average positive feelings over the book was uh, so from the sentiment analysis we have seen that mostly each uh, book have used some of the words and they're like there are some words like boost which is being used across multiple books americans and america has been used across multiple books and mostly all the books having a very neutral um, overall neutral uh, sentiments uh, or close to neutral sentiment whereas the subjectivity is also pretty much close to neutral so the overall all the books are maintaining in, in, in the group, they are maintaining that kind of an sensi uh, sensitivity of the topic and they're maintaining that sentiments of the book. So in, in general, all the books or the group of the books are maintaining this sentiments about the topic in the group of books. Thank you. So as <clears throat> cut. So social network analysis, whatever we have done so far, we, we understood that there are political books bought by the same buyer in 2004 points towards two distinct clusters according to the political leaning of the book. Buyer who bought the conservative books largely bought other conservative books and buyer who bought the liberal books largely bought other liberal books. And that's actually very well coincides with what we actually found in our sentiment analysis also. Uh, from the sentiment analysis that we noted that the top words across the book shows very clearly that there were more book topics on there are on other books there are more topics with being discussed in more than one book and more frequency of term bush was across many books and each books have used some of the most common words across and mostly all the best sellers and having a neutral subjectivity and the overall label and the average positive feelings over the book was uh, so from the sentiment analysis we have seen that mostly each uh, book have used some of the words and there are like there are some words like boost which is being used across multiple books americans and america has been used across multiple books and mostly all the books having a very neutral um, overall neutral uh, sentiments uh, or close to neutral sentiment whereas the subjectivity is also pretty much close to neutral so the overall all the books are maintaining in 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 the group they are maintaining that kind of an sensi uh, sensitivity of the topic and they're maintaining that sentiments of the book so in, in general, all the books or the group of the books are maintaining this sentiments about the topic in the group of books. Thank you. So in my part, I will do some prediction engine. Uh, so I have this is I have loaded the um, some libraries to do my prediction engine and I have loaded the data. So in, in my data, um, I have a, a label here is the books um, um, or the book name here and this is the uh, value which which, uh, um, which represent if the, the books are neutral conservative or um, liberal so I will do my uh, prediction engine with the four features first letter here last letter 
first two letters and last two letters so let me uh, let me get the idea why I doing this feature so so I will do some uh, features test which is which is going to which, which is going to show that um, which which books has like uh, which letters comes in which books liberal books much most so uh, to test the first letter if I will check which which first letter comes most in in which categories of the books and uh, also for the last letters I will do the same thing and first two letters I will do the same thing and last two letters I will do the uh, same thing so creating paragraph of liberal positive and neutral books appear on the first letter to find pattern of which letters have more more appearance on which types of books so I have created um, I have created a bar graph here it will show uh, which has more uh, occurrence so percentage of first first letters in books names here uh, you can see here t has t occurs more in the first letters of the book for conservative than liberal here b occurs more uh, conservative than liberal so uh, from this pattern we can see that the first letter of t and b are much more common among conservative books and the first letter of w are much more common of for liberal books so this then i have created another bar graph for uh, for for last letters so in this last letters you can see here in the last letter you can see there s comes more more in conservative than the liberal and uh, y comes more in liberal than conservative and uh, e came more in neutral than conservative and then liberal so the last letter of s r and n s r n and a are much more common among conservative books and the last letter of y and d are more common for liberal books also the last letter for of e is more common among neutral books next i have created bar graph for first two letters so in the first two letters it shows that see th th appears uh, very equally here but li is more in live more in liberal so in the conclusion you can see the first two letters of wh and de are much more common among conservative books and the first two letters of am and li are more common for liberal books. Also, the first two letters of C O G H P L and S U are common among neutral books. So this is the pattern. And finally, I have created another graph um, to show the last two letters of the book name. So in the last two two letters of the book name, we can see that you can see the C A appear most in the conservative. Uh, The last two letters of C, C, A, N, G, C, Y, and A are much more common among conservative books, and the last two letters of E, S, R, S, R, Y, and T, Y are more common for liberal books. So, in conclusion, we can say some some first letters are more common in liberal than conservative and neutral books. Also, some last letters, first two and last two letters, are more common in conservative than liberal and neutral. By using some accuracy test, we can easily figure figure out which features would be more accurate than the others thank you for uh, watching this video i think you like it have a good day bye bye